so (um) what are some of the nursing care (uh) (uh) problems that the patient's going to present with (uh) so we we look at (uh) the patient who has corona virus to say (uh) how can we nurse this patient using the nursing care plan how can we nurse the COVID patient with the (uh) using the nursing care plan in relation to nation nursing sorry so you know that the nursing care plan it has a problem then it has a nursing diagnosis it has a goal or aim then it also has the intervention as well as the rationale then it has the evaluation so (um) that's how about the the nursing care plan so just to give you a a brief concept um, you know when you are coming up with a a problem you need to first consider which organ does which organ is actually affected so in this case it is the respiratory system and when you look at the respiratory system of course you have the the bronchioles as well as the alveoli all right so if the problem it is happening inside the alveoli you know that inside the alveoli that is where gaseous exchange takes place so you say the problem it will be impaired all right if the problem is happening along the airway this is what you are going to call as ineffective all right it is ineffective if it is along the airway it is ineffective but if it is inside the alveoli you say impaired all right so in this case we have a patient who has got coronavirus what will be the problem what will be the nursing problem so the nursing problem that the patient is going to have it will be impaired gaseous exchange all right um the nursing problem we're saying it is impaired all right impaired uh, gaseous exchange okay so this is one of the nursing problem that the patient is going to present with so the nursing diagnosis which is the table number two so under the nursing diagnosis that the nursing diagnosis they consider you uh these weights related to or due to as well as an evidence all right so a diagnosis it has uh it has these ways that are very much important for you to bring them out related to or due to or evidenced by the problem what is causing the what is causing this patient to have impaired gaseous exchange that is related to what all right then the evidence what is it what is it that is going to show to you that the patient has impaired gaseous exchange so let us try to write the the same problem that we have the impaired gaseous exchange then we see how it will actually come out all right so we we are saying that um, impaired gaseous exchange all right impaired gaseous exchange related to related to what let us try to use a different color here impaired gaseous exchange related to so here where there is related you can if you don't want to use related you can say due to so related to what what is causing the impaired gaseous exchange so inside in pathophysiology of coronavirus please if you haven't watched that video find time to watch those videos so inside the alveoli there is accumulation of fluid so impaired gaseous exchange related to accumulation right accumulation of fluid all right fluid in the alveoli all right so this this fluid it is the one that is causing the impaired gaseous exchange in the alveoli there are no fluid so if the if fluid accumulate then the patient is going to have problems or challenges with breathing so um what is the evidence that is going to uh to show to you that the patient has uh, is having problems with uh with breathing okay so evidenced by what so evidenced by evidenced by dyspnea all right or you can say shortness of breath so related to plus and evidence these are very vital guys when you're writing the nursing diagnosis so we go to the goal or aim what is your objective what do you want to achieve 
what do you want to do since this patient already has uh, the impaired gaseous exchange of course you're not going to relieve the the uh, the the damage you are going to actually improve it so that the patient uh, keeps on improving all right and the gaseous exchange of the patient becomes improved so when you're writing the go or m the goal or aim, it should be patient-centered, okay? It should be patient-centered and it should have a time frame, okay? It should be realistic and have a time frame. So let us try to write the same impaired gaseous exchange. So the goal or aim, it will be impaired uh, patient, sorry, patient, um, patient's gaseous exchange, patient gaseous uh exchange all right will be okay patient gaseous exchange will be improved okay after 30 minutes of nursing intervention all right Patient gaseous exchange will be improved after 30 minutes of nursing intervention. So, what are the components that we have talked about? Patient centered, of course. This is a patient, it's patient centered. Will be, all right, plus the time frame. These are very much important. This 30 minutes is very much realistic, all right? So, that is the goal aim. Then what would be the intervention? So on the intervention, we shouldn't consider giving, uh, putting the patient on nasal uh, oxygen uh, therapy, which is uh, on nasal flow of oxygen therapy, because when you put the patient on nasal flow uh, oxygen therapy, is that that collapsed alveoli is going to continue collapsing and worsening and result in atelectasis. So you want to open up that alveoli which has been collapsed. So on the intervention, what do you want? To, what do you want to do? How are you going to improve the gaseous exchange of the patient? That is the intervention. Okay. How are you going to improve the gaseous exchange of the patient? And whenever you write the intervention, make sure that you put the rationale. All right. So if you are a student, a student nurse. Um, when you're writing the intervention, make sure that your intervention should start with I will, all right? Because you're not on the words, okay? You are in class. You are writing this as maybe in an exam, okay? I will nurse, okay? I will nurse the patient on mechanical ventilation, all right? With, all right? With, uh, Oxygen therapy of four to six liters per minute. All right. Why? Why? Why are you? Why are you coming up with that intervention? You need to. Give, you need to say the the rationale. Why are you going to nurse the patient on mechanical ventilation with oxygen therapy of four to six liters? All right. To improve. The reason why you're doing this, you want to improve the gaseous exchange, all right? To improve the gaseous exchange, all right? I will nurse uh, the patient on mechanical ventilation with oxygen therapy of 4 to 6 liters per minute to improve the gaseous exchange of the patient, all right? Uh, what else do you have to consider? Okay, what if the patient has got secretion? If the patient has secretion, what are you going to do? Okay, so you have to consider to say, I will, all right? I will suck the secretion, all right? Where are you going to suck the secretion? It's, of course, from the mouth, from the mouth and nose, okay? What are you going to use? Using a working... Okay, using a working suction machine, okay, using a working suction machine to prevent why are you, why are you sucking the secretion out, okay, because you want to prevent 
aspiration aspiration of secretion okay you don't want the patient to aspirate the secretion because if the patient aspirate those secretion the patient's going to have uh, aspiration in pneumonia all right what other intervention are you going to consider all right so in the next intervention i won't write i will since you already know that you need to start with i will what else are you going to consider uh, you have to consider actually um what if the patient's tongue it has rolled back and then this tongue that has rolled back it has occluded the patient's airway the patient cannot breathe because of the tongue that has rolled back and you know the tongue it's a muscle so it will need a maneuver for it to actually come into its own position and prevent the occlusion of uh, the airway so what are you going to say so um uh, you tilt okay the head and you extend the neck okay if tongue has occluded airway okay in in this intervention you are saying that if maybe the tongue has occluded the airway what intervention are you going to do you are going to tilt the the patient's head and you extend the neck of the patient okay in order to allow free flow entry of air or oxygen sorry so what other intervention are you going to to say under the uh, on this impaired gaseous exchange what other intervention so wrap this one then the other intervention that you are going to consider it is the position of the patient how is the position of the patient since this patient they're having challenges with what with breathing they cannot be in orthopenia position or in supine position because they will fail to breathe okay so you need to consider position them in semi flowerless all right semi flowerless to allow why are you doing this what is your rationale for you to position them in semi flowerless so it has a semi flowerless position all right why are you positioning them in the semi flowerless to allow full line expansion okay so this is the reason why you are positioning them in semi flowerless you want to allow the full line expansion all right what else do you have to consider what else what other intervention the other intervention that you need to consider it is actually uh but giving them drugs okay give them drugs the drugs that are going to actually uh prevent those uh the neutral fuels from releasing the the proteases that are going to damage the alveolar wall cells okay so these were basically some of the intervention but there are so many interventions that you can do so let us look at the evaluation how can we actually write the evaluation okay how can we best write the evaluation of the patient with impaired gaseous exchange all right so even the evaluation itself it should be patient centered all right evaluation it should be the evaluation it should be patient centered so what would be the the evaluation it should be patient centered and the evaluation it should have an evidence okay so we are saying that patient gaseous exchange okay which is this one all right which is this one here patient gaseous exchange you just bring it here patient gaseous exchange has been okay patient gaseous exchange has been okay has been improved okay after 30 minutes of nursing intervention evidenced by okay what is it that is going to show to tell you to say the patient's conscious exchange has been improved evidenced by what evidenced by uh of course you are going to see the normal respiration all right evidenced by 
normal respiration of maybe uh, let's just say um, you know that 16 to 20 uh, uh, breath uh, per minute those are the respiration okay maybe evidenced by normal respiration of uh, 20 breath per minute okay so this is an evidence make sure that it is patient centered it has been okay time frame as well as an evidence okay these are the component you need to consider when you're writing the nursing care plan under the impaired gaseous exchange what is also the another problem that the patient's going to present with okay so another problem that the patient will present with uh, it is what we are calling as uh, it is altered altered thermal regulator all right altered thermal regulator so how is uh, the thermal regulator of the patient being altered okay so how can we write the nursing diagnosis so the nursing diagnosis here it will be altered or altered thermal regulator right related to what related okay related to cytokines released released by macrophages okay related to cytokines cytokines released by macrophages cytokines like what like interleukin 1 okay another one interleukin 6 tumor necrosis factor alpha these cytokines they are doing what okay viola all right um in the alveoli the the macrophage actually it starts releasing the cytokines cytokines like what interleukin 1 interleukin 6 tumor necrosis factor alpha these cytokines they stimulate okay these they stimulate okay they stimulate the hypothalamus okay and once they stimulate the hypothalamus the patient's going to have what fever okay once they stimulate the hypothalamus the hypothalamus is going to produce prostaglandin and then prostaglandin it is going to increase the body temperature of the patient okay they stimulate the hypothalamus so evidenced by what what will be your evidence evidenced by fever all right evidenced by by fever so this is actually the nursing problem under outer thermal regulator so what will be your goal aim make sure your goal or aim it should be patient centered as well all right it should be patient centered patient um, patients uh, body temperature will be reduced to no within normal range okay so let us try to write patient uh, patient's body temperature will be have you seen will be and here we have will be patient's body temperature will be okay reduced to normal range of 37 degrees celsius okay after uh after one hour or 30 after 30 minutes of nursing intervention all right so this is how you write patient's body temperature will be reduced to normal range of um, 37 degrees after 30 minutes of nursing intervention so what happens when the patient has got body temperature of course you need to consider that if the if the temperature of the patient is high you are going to tape sponge the patient okay you tape sponge the patient you give antipyretic okay so you consider giving antipyretic because you want to reduce the uh, the temperature of the patient all right so you give uh, antipyretic okay such as panadol you tape sponge the patient okay you tape sponge the patient you can open nearby windows you also give some 
some drugs such as uh, tocluzumab. Okay, you give some drugs such as uh, tocluzumab. This drug it is actually preventing the the macrophage from releasing the interleukin one, interleukin six from stimulating the hypothalamus that is going to cause uh, the body temperature to actually rise up. You can as well um, uh, try to remove extra renin from the patient. You remove um, extra renin, okay? You remove extra renin from the patient. Then the evaluation, it should also be patient-centered, okay? It should also be patient -centered. So you need to consider that on the intervention, you need to give antipyretic, okay? So that uh, the body temperature is actually reduced. You need to tape sponge the patient, okay? You need to give tocluzumab. The tocluzumab, it's actually preventing the, the, the cytokines that are released by the macrophage from stimulating the hypothalamus. You need to consider you removing the extra linen, okay? Then the evaluation, make sure that it is patient-centered, okay, and it has an evidence, okay? So what are some of the problems? Let's just try to write some of the problems. So I'm going to wrap the, I love these problems, all right? What are some of the problems? So the patient is also going to have self-care deficit, okay, because they are having fatigue, okay? They are having fatigue. Why? Because the gaseous exchange is impaired and there is no oxygen and nutrient that is actually reaching the muscle cells. So there will be fatigue. If there is fatigue, meaning they are going to fail to do their daily uh, living activity. So there will be self-care deficit. Then the other nursing, uh, the other nursing problem that the, this patient will have, uh, they will have anxiety, of course. They will have anxiety. They will be worried. They don't know why they are in isolation. Okay, these clients are going to be isolated. So they will be worrying about why am I in isolation? Okay, so you need to make sure that you actually remove the, you allay their anxiety. You need to allay the patient's anxiety. Then this patient, they are also at risk of, uh, they will also be at risk of nosocomial infection. Okay, nosocomial infection because the immunity has been compromised okay then this plant they are also at risk uh, of having or developing uh, pressure sores especially those uh, risk of pressure sores formation okay risk of pressure sores formation especially those clients that are confined to bed the clients that are actually confined to bed are at risk of developing a pressure source formation. So thank you very much, guys, for watching this, uh, for your time, for watching this uh, nursing care plan for COVID-19 uh, patient. You can please like my page um, on Facebook, which is uh, Raymond Friday Moore. Then you can also please subscribe if you haven't yet subscribed. Thank you.